My name is Evan Brack, and I am a musician and avid fan of rock and roll music. When I first heard the mystifying sounds coming from Jimi Hendrix guitar for two years ago, I was completely blown away to say the least. His guitar skill is unmatched and is actually the reason I decided to further my musicianship with the guitar. Born Johnny Allen Hendrix on November 27, 1942 in Seattle, Washington, Jimmy would be raised by his mother Lucille for the first few years of his life, while his father Al fought in World War II. When Jimmy turned 15, which was around the time his mother died, his father brought Jimmy his first electric guitar. And according to Jimmy's brother Leon, Jimmy played the guitar several hours a day and listened to records to improve his playing. Later on in his life, Jimmy got busted by the law twice for driving stolen cars. His penalty was either two years in prison or to enlist in the army. Jimmy chose the latter and was enlisted on May 31, 1961. He was discharged from the military after only one year for being a subpar soldier. The following years after his discharge, Jimmy played many venues with his friend he met in the army, Billy Cox, in Tennessee. He later landed on the spot with acts like the Isley Brothers, Little Richard, and Ike and Tina Turner. Unenthused by many of his backing positions he landed, Jimmy decided to form his own group called the Blue Flame. Chas Chandler of the Animals later discovered Jimmy, and Jimmy Hinch's experience was formed with Noel Redding on bass and the great Mitch Mitchell on drums. Their first album was Are You Experience, which saw great success in London, reaching number two on the charts, just behind Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles. With still not much popularity in the U.S., the group decided to play the Monterey International Pop Festival in Monterey, California. This was the same show Jimmy infamously smashed and lit his guitar on fire while on stage. It is also to be believed that Jimmy would insert hits of LSD into his headband, which would dissolve into his system while he sweated on stage. The group's next album, Axis Bold as Love, was released in December of 1967. The album reached number 3 in the US and number 5 in the UK. The last album by the group was Electric Ladyland, which reached number 1 on the Billboard Top 200 albums. This album contained one of the most famous covers, All Along the Watchtower, by Bob Dylan. After the breakup of the Jimmy Hinters experience, Jimmy formed a new group called Gypsy Sun and Rainbows with his army buddy Billy Cox and Mitch Mitchell on drums. This is the same lineup that played the Woodstock Festival in 1969. During their set at Woodstock, Hendrix decided to rename the band Band of Gypsies. Band of Gypsies later toured around the U.S., generating a live album that reached number 5 on the charts in the U.S. But on September 18, 1970, Hendrix was found dead at his girlfriend Monica Damon's apartment. An autopsy release said that Hendrix took nine of Monica's prescription sleeping pills with lots of wine and choked on his vomit. He was only 27 years old. To reach the level of skill Jimmy Hendrix had with writing songs and playing the guitar is close to impossible. With such a distinctive sound, it is hard for any musician to recreate Hendrix's guitar parts and get away with it. Hendrix is a phenomenal, one-of-a-kind guitar player who influenced many musicians that we know today. It is truly a tragedy for someone with that much skill to die so young. Only releasing three studio albums, Hendrix's best material may have well been in his years to come. So farewell to the greatest guitar player to have ever walked this earth. I can honestly say that we will never see someone quite like him in our lifetime.